if you'd like to leave a comment to me, you can go to my website, robinbrumfield.com. There's a comment page there that you can leave me a comment. I'll get that. And if you want me to respond, just let me know. You got a question or a comment that you would like me to respond to, just let me know through that. There's also uh, several pages on that website with different uh, links to uh, places to help you in your study of God's Word, as well as a list of books that you may find helpful. Today, we're uh, looking in our continuing series on healing. And there's a big interest in healing and healing services among Christians. It's very, very hot topic today. It is something that you see a lot, and there's a lot of it that goes around in the Christian community. If you don't believe that, if you're in doubt of that, just turn your TV to any of the Christian stations, and before long, you'll see some type of healing service going on there. Well, what we'll want to do today is look into the scriptures for a biblical view of healing. We, we see right off in our text in James 5, 13 to 16, is where we're going to be today. James chapter 5, verses 13 and 16, through 16. We see in verse 13 that it addresses us when we're suffering. Notice in James 5, 13, it says, Is any among you suffering? And so that word suffering there in the Greek actually means no immediate relief. Like you're not going to get a quick fix to this. You're not going to take a few pills, get a shot or two, and you'll be well. It's something that does not have an immediate relief. It is the suffering being talked here. Uh, notice what it tells us to do when we are in that type of situation. We see as we continue with James 5 verse 13, it says, is any among you suffering? Then it says that you pray. That is what we are to do. Scripture tells us that we are to pray when we're under suffering that has no immediate relief. Notice it does not say that healing will come. There's no promise uh, of healing coming to us as individuals when we're going through this suffering. We're just asked to pray. And as we pray, we should agree with Paul in his view of healing. View, uh, Paul's view of healing is seen in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the latter part of verse 9 and verse 10. This is very insightful and very helpful to us when we're going through suffering and sickness. Notice it says 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Therefore, most gladly will I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, look at verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Those are very helpful words. Because we realize that as we're going through suffering and sickness, that it draws us closer to the Lord God. We beg for him to heal us. We beg for his mercies that it will happen quickly and that we won't have to have an illness that is prolonged. And in that, we can agree with Paul that it draws us clearer, clearer and nearer to Christ, which is a good thing. Well, James doesn't stop just with suffering. He goes on and talks about 
when we're actually sick. We, we see that in verse 14. It says, is any among you sick? Here, sick means totally incapacitated. You are beyond uh, suffering. You are totally incapacitated. And look what it recommends that we do in verse 14. When you are totally uh, without any type of recourse, that you are really very, very sick, that you're incapacitated. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. We see here first that the one who is sick should contact the sick, the church. When you were, got an illness that is severe, you need to contact the church so they can be praying for you. You see, some never let the church know that they're sick. When they get really sick, they're in the hospital, they, they don't let the church know, and they wonder why is there no contact? with them while they're in the hospital. This happens very frequently to pastors and pastoral staff that people will ask, why didn't you visit me in the hospital? And they make known to them the reason that we didn't. We didn't even know that you were there. So when you were very sick, you're in the hospital. Let the church know so that they can be praying for you and that they can visit you in the hospital. You have to let the church know. Well, second, the elders are to anoint and pray. They're to anoint and pray for the person that is sick. The Greek word here for an anoint is not a ceremonial anointing, like it would be for the priest of the Old Testament. They were ceremonial anointed. But this anointed is not talking about that kind of anointing. This uh, anointing uh, is uh, not a ceremonial anointing, but refers to a rubbing a salve or a lotion. It, it talks of, of one that is trained how to rub a certain salve or a lotion on the person that is sick. Well, what does that mean? Well, what that actually is, that was the very best medical treatment that someone could get in that day, was the rubbing of a salve on them to make them well. So the third uh, thing that is talking about here is that it says, in the name of the Lord, when healing is the will of God, then we will be healed. So seek the best medical advice that you can get and realize that through that, if you get healed, then that is from the Lord God. If you do not get healed, that too is from the Lord God. You see, when the healing is the will of God, then you will be healed. And if it's not God's will for healing, we will not be healed. And we need to accept that result is God's will for our life. We need to accept God's will for our life when we're healed or not healed. And keep in mind what Paul had said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 about no matter what he has to go through, as long as he knows that he's serving the Lord Christ, even through severe distresses and persecutions, that he will exalt in those, knowing that he is exemplifying the will of Christ in his life. And that is what we are to do as well. Well, I find several truths worth living uh, from this passage, and, and so, several of these uh, truths worth living come from verse 16 out of James chapter 5, which says, 
confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. First, you need to confess your sins to the Lord. We know from 1 John 1, 9, it tells us that we need to confess our sins and that Christ is righteous, he's just, and that he will forgive us our sins and he will actually cleanse us from all that unrighteousness. We know from other parts of scripture that when we sin, it's looked as a, a, a dirty, filthy rag, just like when you see a mechanic working on a car and, and he goes to wipe his hands off and the rag that he uses is just filthy with oil and grease and grime. It's just horrible. That's what is depicted as the way our sin is. And then as we confess that to the Lord Christ, when we confess it to him, he makes it as white as snow. So first we need to confess our sins. It's good for your physical health. So get in the habit of praying often and confessing your sins to the Lord Christ. Second, you should pray for one another. We need to pray for other people than just ourselves. We need to have a circle of people that we pray for on a consistent basis, on a daily basis. We need to be praying for them, and we need to practice it and not just give lip service to the praying of other people. We've all been guilty of someone saying, hey, I want you to pray for me. And we say, oh, I'll pray for you. And that's the last that happens. That we forget about it. We don't remember to pray for them. And so we don't. I realized that was something that was happening in my life. So I've got a habit. When someone asks me to pray for them, I say, sure, I'll pray for them. And either I will pray for them right then, if that is appropriate. If not, then I will turn away from them. And when I do, I lift up a prayer for them. Learn to have a, a habit of praying for other people. Well, third, you should use medical doctors and follow their advice, is what this passage is saying. This is biblical, and you're wise to follow it. You're wise if you follow the advice of medical professions. You see, asking others to pray for you physical healing and ignoring medical advice is just not biblical. It's not biblical just to pray without following the best medical practices of our day. So as we follow those medical practices, we are to pray for the healing, pray for restoration, and pray for that at that time. Well, fourth, when healing comes from God, rejoice and give him the glory. Let him know that you're grateful, that you're thankful, and how wonderful it is that he has answered your prayer. Praise God for his answer. Prayer is what we need to do. And finally, remember that all healing comes from the Lord God himself. It doesn't matter if it's from a doctor, from a doctor performing a certain procedure on you that brings that restoration, or, or maybe it's some medicine that the doctor or, or nurse practitioner uh, tells you to take, and through taking that medication, that illness, that sickness is completely gone. Or maybe it is just by prayer. Maybe uh, as you pray that God answers that prayer. Whatever it is, give thanks to God in each situation. Let him be the one that gets the praise, the honor, and the glory for what he has done in your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that you are the great healer, that you are the great physician, Lord, and that all healing, whether it comes through other means or through prayer itself, that you are the one that heals. As we go through sickness and as we go through suffering and as we reach out to you, Father, console us. 
If you do not heal us, give us your peace. Give us your well-being of knowing that we're doing what we need to do. And Lord, if you provide healing, we'll praise you for it. And even if you don't provide healing, we'll praise you for that because we know that it's not your will for our lives. We are just to follow you and whatever you bring in our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. I'll have another message next Tuesday. Until then, you just have a great week.